Hi folks, welcome back. This is session 11, uh, Monte Carlo Inferencing. And we're going to talk now about rejection sampling. So this is a, another way of, of producing samples when you don't, you don't want to, or you are not able to compute the, the inverse of the CDF for your, of your functions. So let me go through the um, uh, simple idea to try to introduce what this is, and then we can, um, we'll try to formalize it, okay? So imagine that you have some, some distribution that you want to uh, sample from, and it may or may not be um, normalized, so they just call it uh, P tilde X. And now the thing is that sampling from this is hard because again, you don't have uh, your CDF or you don't have a way of computing it. So how can you do, right? How can you do it? Now, the idea is maybe propose an upper bound as close as possible to this distribution. So you have this function over here. And this upper bound will help you to do some approximation here. And the idea is that this is a nice function that you can uh, work with, or it's a nice distribution that you can work with. And what you're going to do is that uh, you want to find some x within this um, uh, this this range, right? So when you have this proposal, what you want to do is that you want to see what is the the distribution over here, and the idea is that you want to draw some uh, random value from this length over here uniformly. So let's say like if you draw from here, you will draw some um, uniform value such that your, um, your probability that you find that is smaller or uh, than, than the um, likelihood of the original uh, P of tilde that you want to, to find. So this is what we call the acceptance region. So you're going to accept your proposal. On the contrary, if you just draw this and it just you happen to just get this value over here, then you're going to reject it. So this is the reject region. And the whole idea of this is that it happens that you can get this acceptance and this rejection with some probability that is um, proportional to 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 the likelihood of that one that you cannot. Uh, compute. So how does this work in in the um, uh, kind of formal way? Okay, so you want to propose some Q of X, right? This is going to be your proposal distribution, right? So this is going to be my my upper bound, but I don't want to use any Q of X. I want to um, multiply it by, by some envelope that is can be a function or, or, or a constant such that this is going to be greater or equal to my distribution that I want to draw from. And it happens that for some constant m, this will hold, okay? And then what we said is like my, my proposal D, uh, times m is an upper envelope of this uh, p tilde x, okay? So the whole idea is sample from q of x, some particular x, Okay, so I have some, some random location, and then I wanna get this uniform right between zero and one. And you want to see how, how tall can you be within this value, right? But now the whole idea is that you want to compute some ratio. So on the unnormalized function, you can ask what is the acceptance rate? So if my U is greater than the ratio between the likelihood of this sample that I got with respect to my uh, distribution of interest over my envelope. So if this ratio, it is, uh, so, sorry, if, if my uniform sample is greater than this ratio, then I accept it, okay? Oh, sorry, I reject the, the, the sample because it will mean that I'm, I'm on top, right? Uh, reject, otherwise, accept. 
So I'm just comp I'm just trying to find out what is my my acceptance threshold, right? So if I am outside of my acceptance threshold, then I will just go outside. So why why does this work, right? Because when this value will be really high, when the when the likelihood of p of x is higher than the likelihood of my q of x. But if my likelihood of q of x is really uh, similar to this of p of uh, of p tilde, then I will get a value uh, close to one, such that my uniform is going to get it uh, accepted, right? So I want to to maintain that. And if this q of x is really big, right? And I it, it is predicting with a, a, a really high likelihood this value will be small. So my acceptance threshold is small. And if my acceptance threshold is small, it's getting harder and harder for me to accept my, my samples because my U needs to be really small. And then it will be really small with some particular chance. So uh, it, 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 will, it, will, it may work, okay? Now, if you want some uh, more thorough proof just keep go keep listening okay so let's assume that we have these two sets okay i want to define some s set with pairs x and u such that my u my u value is less or equal to p tilde x over mqx okay so these are my accepted pairs right because I have an X and a U such that this U is less than my acceptance uh, rate over here. And I'm going to have an S naught over here. That is X U. And this is some X that is less than X zero, some initial value. And I'm going to have this U that is also accepted, okay? P of X over MQX. So this is, again, a set of accepted values, except that these values are less or equal to some x0 that I have over here. Nice, so what I wanna do now, I want to compute what is the probability of x being smaller than x0, such that, or given that x is accepted. Right. Now, this is uh, simple. I can just compute my definition of this probability. So this is the joint over this space over here. So this is the probability of x being less or equal to x0 and that x is accepted over the probability that x is accepted. Right? I'm just applying the, the common laws of probability over here. Now, what will happen is that um, I can transform this into uh, some integrals. So this is the integral of the indicator function of x being, uh, sorry, in, in which my pair x u, right? Because this is in the set s, uh, is in, it's not, and the probability of x that being accepted, but x comes from q and a, q, yeah, q, qx, right? So this will be my qx and du dx, right? So this just comes from the definition of my, of my sets over here. So I'm just uh, doing the, the integral over there and just restricting everything to come with respect of uh, x u coming from u naught such that I maintain my x being less than x zero over um, the double integral of being accepted. And what is the meaning of being accepted, right? That my pair x u is in the accepted set and that my x comes from qx, so this is my, my qx du dx, right? And if I do this integral over here, um, the du is simply u value from zero up, up to this value over here, right? Because it is an upper bound. So this is my 
from 0 to x0, qx, times dx from u, from uh, 0 to p tilde x uh, over m qx. Okay, and the same thing will happen below from 0 to uh, sorry, just uh, the difference is like now my x is not uh, limited by anything, right? It can be whatever. So, oh, sorry, this is minus infinity. So, minus infinity up to infinity of qx dx u from 0 to p tilde x mqx, right? And this over here is simply... Um, the integral now from 0 to x0 p till the x dx over minus infinity to infinity p till the x dx, right? So this is p of x because this is my px uh, value up to x0 and this is the normalization function, right? So this is uh, my distribution that I was looking for and um, that's why when you do the sampling you are uh, the probability of getting that value and given that you accept according to this uh, condition gives you the original distribution so the probability of this x is equivalent to getting the probability from the original distribution that you got. So that's the, the whole idea, right? And something interesting that we can gather from, from this part over here is the following, just the probability of being accepted or accepting this uh, x is um, the integral of this thing over here. So we end up with uh, this integral in here and um, when we plug this you will see that we have this um, qx dx times this px tilde over mqx right and this cancels here and we have that is one over m of the integral of p tilde x dx, and this is really interesting because when you are in high in higher dimensions, this um, m tends to be exponential is is an exponential function in d, so the acceptance rate goes down really really fast, and actually it will go exponentially fast. So you have some problem here because. Uh, your regression sampling stop working when you have high dimensions because this acceptance rate is so small that it is really really difficult to get these samples and just getting it passed so it's something that you need to be uh, aware of when you are working with these in higher dimensions there are some ways of, of solving this issue and you are encouraged to, to use those in case you want to work with this Okay, um, so one way is getting tighter uh, solutions, oh, sorry, tighter um, rejection um, boundaries over here. So what you do is like, instead of trying to just get one particular value, you do, just do some uh, piecewise value. So let's say like if that is your, your, your uh, function, then you find some points let's say like you sample those points in a grid or uh, equidistant from each other. And then what you want to do over here is that you want to use the tangent and solve for this tangent and try to find some envelope piecewise that let you get those functions, okay? Now, the thing is, at some points, depending the shape of these of these uh, envelopes that you want to use, you will get better or worse uh, solutions, right? Because what you are solving is solving the, the tangent uh, function on each of those points. Now, what will happen is that imagine when you get one of these values over here, 
and you get some rejection here, it is because these boundaries that you have are not tight enough around this section, right? Because if you see, I have a lot of acceptance in here with respect to these two, my chances of, of missing is just this, this small triangle. But in here, because my, my tangents are not working that well, I get this uh, huge rejection uh, zone, if you want. So what we do is like, now I'm going to sample and use this one and add it to my set of, of tangent functions, right? Now my envelope is tighter than before, and this will allow me to continue. I'm trying to solve this iteratively, adding more and more functions to, to, my, uh, to my upper bound. Now, that is really nice. And what the, the whole difference here is that this Q, my proposal, my QX that I want to select, it is of the following shape. I will have an M I, uh, lambda I, and the exponential of minus lambda I, X minus X, I minus one for um, X, I minus one, less or, uh, sorry, less than X and less or equal to X, I. So just pick one, right? Because you don't want to have both in the, in both uh, terms. And this will allow you to, to tie the bound and, and improve that solution. Um, one example that we can use these for is, for instance, Bayesian statistics. Um, not the, the tighter part, but the original uh, rejection sampling. So imagine like you want to sample from this uh, theta given D, right? For instance, uh, we were discussing this last time, remember, like in the variational inference case, um, no, it wasn't for the variational inference one. It was for the, the previous to that one. Uh, what was that lecture? Uh, the Gaussian processes, when you wanted to, to sample and get those uh, parameters to do the, um, the marginalization over the GP, it was hard, right? So you can use this type of approach to try to sample the, the theta in that, in that particular case. And this shape over here is going to be uh, your likelihood of the data times um, your prior over the prior of the data, right? Now, the idea is instead of trying to work with the whole um, posterior over here, you want to work with the uh, unnormalized version. So you want to work with this one. And you want to do a uh, rejection sampling on this, on this particular shape over here. And you can define your proposal as your prior of theta. That will help you a lot and you will see why now. And you can define your constant, this m here, as your likelihood. So you can define this as the likelihood given some estimator. And this estimator may be uh, your MLE or some other prior information that you have. So this is going to be the arc max of P uh, D given theta, okay? And now you just plug your estimator and that estimator gives you the value to push this boundary over here from your prior, okay? And now you have some acceptance rate and your acceptance rate, let's call it alpha, is going to be with probability uh, P tilde theta over MQ theta, right? As, as we were doing before. So if your sample is less than this value, then you accept, right? If not, you reject. But what is this value over here? This value is nothing else but your unnormalized version, your PD given theta times P theta, and this M, that is your P, the estimator, times Q. But Q, you just define it as, as your prior, right? So this lets you just use the ratio between um, your likelihood 
and some likelihood given the maximum likelihood estimator. And you can just use this simple approach to draw samples, right? You just go test the parameter and see how like how good that parameter is with respect of uh, some estimator or not. And that that's it, you know? So you are comparing how the likelihood of your samples are with respect of the of some estimator that you have. And if the, this ratio is good enough, uh, when they are equally likely, then you just almost, uh, you're going to uh, be certain to accept it. And when you are below the maximum likelihood estimator, then you are not going to, to accept that, okay? So this is a nice way of going through uh, these type of approaches and finding uh, better better parameters for your samples. Okay, see you in the next one.